and a lesson in the strange and fragile interconnections of Earth's crust. When there is a really big earthquake on Earth, like in Indonesia in 2004, that earthquake rings the Earth like a bell. Seismic waves travel all around the planet. They travel around several times. And if two plates of roughly equal weight collide, they buckle into the air, creating the third kind of earthquake star. Mountains. All three types of faults, those where plates slide past each other, dive beneath each other, and crash head on, mark the boundaries of Earth's gigantic plates. Those boundaries account for 90% of all earthquakes on the planet. Which raises a question. Oklahoma is over a thousand miles from the nearest plate boundary. So what's going on? It all goes back to what causes faults to form in the first place. Plate tectonics. Plate tectonics describes how these massive crustal plates move over the surface of the Earth. There's, roughly speaking, a baker's dozen big plates, plus a whole bunch of small ones that are constantly kind of shuffling around on the surface of the Earth. But what force could be gigantic enough to push entire continents around? The answer, searing heat rising from the Earth's interior. Heat from the Earth's core drives convection in the Earth's mantle. Just like heat from the bottom of your lava lamp drives convection within the lamp. The light bulb at the bottom of your lamp heats wax. The wax becomes less dense, rises. As it rises, it cools, becomes more dense, and then sinks again. Plate tectonics and the huge quakes it creates have continued non-stop everywhere on Earth for billions of years. Look at this globe. By about 300 million years ago, the plates had pushed the continents together to form the supercontinent of Pangaea. Then about 200 million years ago, those continents broke up, pieces moving into the positions we know them today. As a result, even the quietest corners of the planet, beneath great cities, comfortable suburbs, and small towns like Prague, Oklahoma, are riddled ancient faults. And in many places, those ancient faults are under intense pressure, always just ready to give. I think it's very likely that most of the other places in the, in the U.S. where there are faults do have a lot of stress stored under them. So the stress is already there, it just may take something to trigger them. Once that trigger is pulled, every quake on Earth will begin the same way as a tiny quake when a minuscule portion of a fault begins to slip. Imagine this brick is the North American plate and the board is the Pacific plate. The interface between them is the San Andreas Fault, which we're going to be stressing by pulling on this rope. The stress on the San Andreas Fault is constantly increasing. The stress is increasing and increasing at a constant rate, adding stress, adding stress. Stress continues to increase Increase, increase, bam, a big earthquake. 